Hello and welcome to part 15 of the series on computer networks. I hope you have watched the previous parts of this series. If not, the links are given in the description. You can always go and check them out. So today's topic of discussion is network addresses. So let us try to discuss what network addresses is. Before that, I want to say you that all of you have a home address. Let's say you do shopping for some object online. So after you add the products to the cart, what you need to do, you need to put your home address. Why, why is that home address required? The home address ensures that the object will come only to your house and not to someone else's house. Similarly, when communication happens between nodes in a network, it must be ensured that the data goes only to the intended recipient and not to any other recipient. So what is network address in technical terms? A network address is an identifier just as your home address is the identifier for your home. Similarly, how to identify some nodes or some server? It can be identified with the help of an address known as network address. So a network address is an identifier for a node or host on a telecommunications network. So it is designed to be an unique identifier across the network. As your home address is unique, similarly, each node will have an unique address so that there is no conflict when data travels from the sender to the receiver. Let's go to the type of network addresses. So the types are first is web address. It is also known as URL. Next is IP address. And the third is MAC address. Let's go to each one of them one by one. First, we'll be beginning with web address or URL. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. So each website has a unique address known as URL. When you access a website, let's say you want to access the website Google. What do you type in your web browser? www.google.com www.google.com is known as the URL or Uniform Resource Locator. Let's try to see an example of another URL. So similarly, the URL of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a library where, online library where you can search information regarding some topics. So if you want to access the website of Wikipedia, you need to give www.wikipedia.org https or http whatever protocol it is even if you don't give the protocol it automatically it is automatically added to the url or the web address so what is the general syntax of an url general syntax means this syntax will be there in each and every url present in the web the syntax is at first it is the type which is the type in the url of wikipedia the type is https it is the protocol after that we have a colon and then two forward slashes and then we have the main address when we give the main address it will take us to the home page of that particular website after that if we do not want to go to the home address but we want to access some different parts of that particular website then some other sections will be there those sections are referred to as path path will be more clear in the next slide so here type refers to the type of server in which the file is located if it is an ftp server it will be ftp if it is an http server it will be http if it is an https server it will the type will be https as shown in the example above address is the address of the server or the home page of the server path is the location of a file on a server in a server there can be various files so if you want to access a particular file then you require the location of that particular file let's try to understand the concept of path with the help of an example so let's say we have a folder let's say abc it is what it is a folder xyz is also a folder and pqr is also a folder and first.html is the page which to which we want to go now how to go to first.html at first we have to click on abc folder then we need to click on pqr 
then we need to click on first.html now if you look at the address bar of your computer drive then it will be shown in the following form abc slash pqr slash first dot html it may be shown in this form or in this form abc backslash pqr backslash first dot html forward slash or backslash it will depend on the type of operating system but basically you need to know that if you want to traverse to a particular file we need to traverse by going through the different different folders or the different different paths so path refers to the location of a file on server so here type address and path are called the elements of an url so if you are asked as in a question to write down the elements of an url you will write them as type address and path so let's try to understand the example of a complete url so let's say this is the url of a cbsc website of the cbsc website and there we have navigated through certain sections and we have gone to the examination section so here http is known as the type of server as we have already seen in the previous slide cbsc.nic.in is the home page actual home page and it is known as the server address and within that server we are we want to access the file examination.html so we should go through the folder new site and examination.html this will happen automatically you need not navigate the folder yourself you just have to click on the links but wherever it is located it will be shown in the url above in, in the address bar of the browser so from cbsc to html it is known as the complete part of the file examination.html next we go to the next type of network addresses which is the ip address so what is ip address in a network different devices may be connected like computers mobiles printers scanners and various other devices each device which is connected to a network has an address and that address is known as the ip address or internet protocol address so it is a numerical label assigned to each device connected on a computer network so ip addresses these are required so that different networks can communicate with each other if ip addresses are not there how can the nodes communicate with each other for nodes to be communicating with each other we require an address known as the ip address it is known as the logical address also it is written in dotted decimal form or colon format but computers internally convert them into binary form you can write it in a dotted decimal form as follows this is a form known as ipv4 or in a colon format as follows follows but even if you write it in decimal form or hexadecimal form the computers they internally convert it into your binary format you know how to convert into binary we have already covered it in class 11 so now let's go to the versions of ip there are two versions of ip the first is ipv4 or internet protocol version 4 and the second is ipv6 or internet protocol version 6 let's go to the first one which is ipv4 so ipv4 is a 32-bit number that uniquely identifies a network interface on a machine this is very important you should uh, this is often asked as a one mark question ipv4 is a 32-bit addressing scheme so it is typically written in decimal digits formatted as four eight-bit fields that are separated by periods so it is typically written in decimal digits but internally it is converted into the binary form so each 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 eight bit field represents a byte of the ipv4 address i will give you some examples of ipv4 address there you will find that it is written in dotted decimal notation and each bit will uh, and each part will have eight bits 
This form of representing the bytes of an IP version 4 address is often referred to as the dotted decimal format and this format is referred to as dotted decimal format. Remember IPv4 uses dotted decimal format but IPv6 uses colon format. So it allows a total of 2 to the power 32 addresses. See it is such a big number and is the most widely deployed internet protocol. So 2 to the power 32 addresses means this many devices can be supported in IPv4 addresses, addressing scheme. So there are certain rules for IPv4 addresses. You should keep in mind these rules. So there must be no leading zero. There should not be any zero in leading zero means you can write 65 but you cannot write 065. For example, let's consider this example. It has four segments, one, two, three, four, but it should not have any leading zero means 45 is fine but 045 is wrong next rule is there can be no more num there can be no more than four numbers in an ipv4 addresses only four sections are permissible here we have how many sections one two three four five so dot 20 is not acceptable third is each number needs to be between 0 to 255 very important each number of an ip address should be in between 0 to 255 only if it exceeds between if it exceeds above 20 or 255 then it is an invalid ipv4 address like here 301 so it is an invalid ipv4 address a mixture of binary notation and dotted decimal notation is not allowed you can either write ipv4 addressing scheme in binary notation or in decimal notation but a mixture of both the notations is not allowed next is it has the format x dot x dot x dot x where x is an octet so if you convert these decimal values into binary format it will be written in 8 bit format therefore it is said that x is an octet for example 117.149.29.2 this is an valid ip address because here all the rules are followed there is no leading zero here only four parts are there each number is between 0 to 255 and there is no mixture of binary and decimal format next we go to ipv6 or internet protocol version 6 it is a recent format of ip address and it was incorporated why because with time the number of electronic devices that are a part of network are increasing to meet this increasing demand ipv6 is ipv6 is taken out otherwise what will happen if the number of addresses that is 2 to the power 32 is exhausted then how will the new devices get new ip addresses so to meet this demand ipv6 has been introduced so it is a 128 bit long so how many addresses will be supported 2 to the power 128 addresses will be supported which is a very very big number so it consists of 32 hexadecimal digits with every four digits separated by a colon here the segments or the parts will be separated by a colon there are two formats of ipv6 first is the normal ipv6 format and the second is the dual ipv6 format let us see them one by one in case of normal ipv6 address it consists of the following format so here you can see that there are how many sections one two three four five six seven eight there are eight se segments and each segment is separated by a colon in ip version 4 each segment was separated by a dot but here each segment is separated by a colon where y is called a segment and it can be any hexadecimal value between 0 and ff ff if you remember the range of hexadecimal number system it has um, 16 acceptable values from 0 to 9 and from a to f so it must have eight segments as shown in the syntax here 
at some places zero segments can also be omitted some segments may be zero segments so you can just omit it i'll discuss about zero segments now only so for example this is a complete normal ipv6 address here this is also a complete normal ipv6 address but here the last six segments are zero so it can be omitted as it can be evident from the last rule here the first six segments are zero but even that it is a complete normal ipv6 address next we go to the next type of ipv6 address which is dual ipv6 address it consists of the following formula here we have six segments which follows the rule of ipv6 and one more segment which follows the rule of ip version 4 here y is called as a segment the rule is same it must have six segments as in contrast to eight in case of normal ipv6 address here x is called as an octet and it can have any value between 0 and 255 because it follows ipv4 addressing scheme in the last part at some places zero segments can also be omitted let's see some examples this is an example of a dual ip v6 address so first one two three four five six six parts follows the rule of ipv6 addressing scheme and the rest follows the scheme of ipv4 addressing scheme here all six ipv6 segments are zero here see we have written only ipv4 part that means the other parts are zero in the next example first four ipv6 segments are zero so we can write it in this format here the last four ipv6 segments are zero so we can write it in this format so we now know that some zero segments can also be omitted you can just leave it blank next we go to the last type of addresses which is called as the mac address so in network device i discussed about mac address in brief we have a network uh, for in order for the node to be connected to the internet we require a device what is the name of that device that device is known as nic card and each nic card has a physical address physical address means it cannot be erased it can be spoofed by certain techniques but it is out of scope of discussion of uh, this part so it is a unique physical address which is assigned by the manufacturer if the manufacturer of the nic card is let's say wipro so wipro will give an address which is the physical address and it will be written above the nic card it is known as mac address or media access control address it is a six byte address and each byte is separated by a colon this is the format of mac address okay here the first three bytes are given by manufacturer and uh, which is suppose it is by wipro so let, let's say the first three bytes of wipro are one two and three so every nic card of wipro will have the first three bytes as one two three but the last three bytes will be different for each nic card so this is an example of a format of mac address and this is how an nic card looks like we have already discussed about nic card in details in the part on network devices okay i hope the addressing scheme is clear thank you very much